Tax reform has been a major topic during this presidential campaign season. President Obama and the Republican candidates who want his job have offered contrasting blueprints for changing the nation's tax code to make it fairer and less complicated. Mark Everson is the former commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. He's currently vice chairman at Alliant Group, and he joins us now from Indianapolis. Commissioner Everson, welcome to Bottom Line. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, sir, last month, President Obama outlined a corporate tax overhaul that would lower rates but eliminate loopholes and subsidies supported by the business community. Will this be enough to stimulate business development? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is um, it's a good thing that the president has finally weighed in here. Uh, history proves that you can't get tax reform without presidential leadership. I think this is a starting, what he, starting point. He released a a framework, if you will, and that's the same thing in terms of the uh, presidential candidates and also what's been happening in the Congress. So this this is just the start of a complicated and a long process. Well, should domestic manufacturers be exempt from the corporate tax? That's something that Republican candidate Rick Santorum has suggested. Well, at Alliant, we, we do believe that uh, certain things should continue to receive incentives. It's, it's true, we need to simplify the code, we need to make it fair, broaden the base, but uh, we do need to make some intelligent choices here. I would tell you that incentivizing manufacturing, helping small and mid-sized businesses, uh, which after all employ two-thirds of all Americans, uh, it's not just about the big guys, the conversations thus far and largely from the administration has been about big what are called C corps, the multinational corps, but right. helping manufacturers, helping the small guys, that's important, terribly important. Helping innovation. Uh, we believe strongly that uh, we need to work on the research and development area of the economy, maybe even putting in a, a, a refundable credit, if you will, for yeah. startups. There are a lot of things that can be done. Are those some of the things that you believe would have an immediate impact on small and medium sized businesses in this country? Well, they certainly have a beneficial impact in the near term. The other thing, and the president gets at this, as do the candidates, we need permanency in the tax code. Mm -hmm. Frankly, uh, small and mid-sized businesses suffer when there is a constant change. We, we won't get to uh, even serious treatment of what are called the extenders, some of the, some of the programs that are out there now, probably until after the election in the lame duck Congress. Uh, that's unfortunate. We need to have serious conversations look at these issues and make uh, sober decisions, right. but do it with some permanency. Uh, Commissioner Everson, the top income tax rate for individuals is 35%. The rate for dividends and capital gains is 15%. Should there be mm -hmm. a distinction made between so-called regular income and dividends and capital gains? And why isn't all income, no matter how it's earned, whether through labor or by watching your investments grow, taxed at the same rate? Well, I think that certainly needs to be looked at. The economists have varying views on that. But what you're getting at is form of income and also form of structure. One of the concerns we have is that the conversation, again, is going to be too much about large corporations. And then if you, if you lower rates for corporations but you don't deal with that for individuals, most, uh, most of the economic activity that in terms of employees, it all runs back through individuals and flow through. So these, uh, these structures all need to be considered with the impact of one upon another, if you will. Uh, Commissioner, why wasn't there the political will, in your opinion, to implement the tax <laughs> and entitlement reform recommendations yeah. made in 2010 by the White House's bipartisan Simpson-Bowles Commission? And, and wouldn't the recommendations have been a good starting point to get the nation's fiscal house in order? I think those recommendations would have been an excellent starting point, but uh, let's understand how the system really works. If you're a senator or you're a congressman, you get reelected by touting your accomplishments to your constituency, and that means getting a better deal for your local industries or those who are in your district. And that means there's more complexity in the code. Uh, the, so there's a tension in terms of the move towards simplification, which is certainly needed versus the role of elected representatives. Uh, sir, three people in, in, a, in another development, three people have filed a federal lawsuit challenging new licensure requirements for hundreds of thousands of tax preparers across the nation. Mm -hmm. The IRS says those new rules are needed to ensure taxpayers who hire tax preparers get quality service. Does the IRS have the statutory authority to require these kinds of licenses without congressional approval? Well, I haven't studied that issue in terms of the, what you're raising. I suspect they do. Um, and if they didn't, uh, if they don't have 
total clarity, I'm sure the Congress would back that up. I would just say this, I think that it's important to have uh, professionals who are responsible in what work they're doing, but the real issue is, is those who were, um, if you will, blatantly trying to cheat and mm -hmm. Registering those, registering individuals, uh, there'll always be some who who don't bother to register at all, and they help and they try to get a better deal for somebody. So it's a, it's it'll have some impact, but I'm not sure it'll fix everything. Mark Everson, he's the former commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. He's joining us from Indianapolis. He's currently vice chairman at Alliant Group. Mr. Commissioner, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mark.